On today's Taste Texas, it's all about citrus season. Chef Garth is making a delicious pork tenderloin salad that's super easy and full of flavor. And we're taking a visit to the valley to learn how citrus fruits grow in Texas. So pull up a chair and join us at the table. I'm Amy Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. Welcome to the Sub-Zero Kitchen here in Dallas. We welcome our in-studio audience and those of you that are viewing today as well. We're so glad you're with us. I know we're making something delicious and I'm not quite sure what it is, but it has to do with citrus because it is citrus season, right? It's citrusy season. Citrusy season. <laughs> Say that five times real fast. And we had such an awesome trip. We went down to South Texas yeah. to go visit a lot of these citrus farms. It's a great time of year to go yeah. eat right off of the trees and met some awesome people, which you guys will get to see in a little bit. But yeah. let's get started. All right. I tell you, one thing that goes great with citrus, with fruit, with sweet, just in general, is pork tenderloin. Oh, yeah. So we've got some. I heard the audience. Ooh. I just heard that little rumble. <sighs> Warm and fuzzy pork tenderloin. We've okay. got some pasture raised pork tenderloin that I want to trim off some of the fat, just unnecessary, but I also want to find that, which is silver skin. Uh huh. So, first we'll peel off a little outer portion. Why is it called silver skin? Because uh, it kind of looks like skin and it's silver in color. I know, probably difficult for them to come up with that title, right? Um, looks kind of white to me, that's why I asked. So, if you look at it, see on the light how it's kind of iridescent? Right, okay. So, you're going to lift that up. She's not a queen. <laughs> I would rather lose a little bit of meat than have one of my guests or myself dive into a, a, a mouthful tough of gristle. gristle, right? So I generally trim off the, the upper portion. Now, if you want to make the most of it, I'll dice this up and cook it for a long period of time. That'll render a lot of the fat out, but that's not going to be good when we cook pork to a nice pink center. I was waiting for you to say you'll cook it up for the dogs. Or the dogs. <laughs> that would be my dogs that are that ultimately are fed pork very, tenderloin that's very, pasture raised. Very spoiled dogs. <laughs> Apparently so. All right, if you want to make your marinade, uh, marinate a little bit quicker, uh -huh. I'll just put a couple little stabs in the meat. Okay. You won't notice that once we go to sear it. Okay. And I'm going to have you put together the marinade. All right, so you'll perfect. Grab that. Sure. Okay, this is some Texas balsamic vinegar. We're going to use equal parts balsamic, soy sauce, and what's this here sauce? Uh huh. Worcestershire. Okay. Interestingly enough, if you have friends or family that are allergic to fish, don't cook with Worcestershire sauce that actually has anchovies in it. Really? So, and all of y'all that think you hate anchovies, but you love barbecue sauce, you're eating anchovies if it has Worcestershire in it. I did not know that. As I always mention, if you want to go gluten-free, if you have friends that do, I substitute tamari for soy sauce, because that's going to be gluten-free. Mm -hmm. And then this is some Texas balsamic. Look how thick and syrupy that is. Sure is. Wow. So you recall there are a That's couple awesome. of executive chefs in the audience, and in most kitchens, you don't lick your fingers Welcome. while you're preparing food. Welcome to my kitchen. Pressure's on. <laughs> in fact, are y'all looking for a sous chef? Because I might have one to fill a role over there. See? He said she's hired. Did you hear that? <laughs> it sounded like that, but it started with an F. Um, <laughs> she got fired? No. No, not that F. Anyhow, we're going to zip that up <laughs> for a good reason. We're going to marinate that. This doesn't have a ton of acidity. Balsamic vinegar is fairly low in terms of acid level. So I can leave that on, unlike last week's show where we do, did a bunch of lime juice. Five minutes. Right, five, ten minutes at the most. Right. Yeah, in fact, we had some issues there. I think it was more like 15, <laughs> but it, you don't want to put a bunch of grapefruit juice right. or lemon juice or lime juice on this and leave it for more than 10 or 15 minutes. With the balsamic, I'm really pretty good to go for an hour, two hours. If you wanted to, you could do overnight. I just, I don't want that much flavor permeating into it. So All right. We will let that sit and you are going to, this is the side. You're gonna go ahead and start to make our salad dressing. Okay. 
I'll tell you what, will you grab that salad dressing? Real quick? Yep. And I'm going to move this off. And if you'll grab that mustard. Right. Here's a so spoon. we have some mustard. Did you not want to pronounce <laughs> Dusseldorf? It's a long word that I'm afraid will sound nasty if I say it the wrong way. It is from Fredericksburg <laughs> Farms. That's here, uh, here in the Hill Country. So that'll be our base. Okay. A little avocado oil. All right. I don't know how much you want. I'm just guessing. About a quarter of a cup, which okay. is how many tablespoons, sous chef? Four. Four tablespoons. Impressive. It's a quarter numbers. of a cup. Did you know that? Did you need? I to just know that? learned that. You know this already. Okay. Did you want some of this uh -huh. as well? Okay. So some Texas olive oil from the Texas Olive Ranch. Uh huh. Okay. And once I get my fingers cleaned off and we get our knife cleaned up, we're gonna put in. A little Ponderosa bit. lemon. This is a lemon, y'all. That's a lemon. You're going to take a at This is what we call layer. a Texas size lemon. A little Texas grapefruit. Yep. Some Texas orange. Yep. And Texas Meyer lemon as well. That's all going to go in the salad dressing mm -hmm. and more mm -hmm. when we come back. I told you it's citrus season. We'll be right back. Stay with us.